Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Mid Speeds live class. I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. And if anyone comes in the live class, then I'll go ahead and unmute and answer any questions after we're done. Okay, so let's get started with some consonant compounds. All right, these are just words. Here we do. Here we go. Ready? Fleet, sky, dream, shake, fret, trot, pleat, thumb, these, spine, tree, scheme, slam, clear, grass, dry, smear, queen, drop, spell, sneak, pride, dwell, creek, snow, clam, bend, sort, Hard, worn, faint, table, lard, fable, worn, port, send, furl, mark, heart, fable, paint, card, dart, cure, learn, tend, wobble, lard, turn, lend, kind, plant, skirt, glint, third, Graft, slurp, front, smart, drift, theft, fling, prance, shift, blunt, thing, flirt, shaft, stern, dribble, flaunt, chant, glance, chance, swarm, shirt. All right. Moving on to common phrases. You want to phrase as much as possible. Here we go, ready? How can, if he can, if I can, it can, she can, so I can, so you can, that can, that he can, that I can, that you can, there can, they can, this can, we can, what we can, what I can, what you can, when can, when he can, when I can, when you can, where can, where I can, where you can, whether he can, whether I can, whether or not he can, whether or not I can, whether or not you can, whether you can, which can, who can, you can, it cannot, she cannot, that cannot, they cannot, this cannot, we cannot, what he cannot, what I cannot, what you cannot, when I cannot, when you cannot, where I cannot, where you cannot, whether he cannot, whether I cannot. <clears throat> All right. Moving right into some names and addresses. Here we go, ready? Mrs. Bonnie D. Brands, B-R-A-N-D-S, Handicap Village of Northwest Iowa. 330 Village Circle, Sheldon, Iowa, 51201. Ms. Marty Tumbush, T-U-M-B-U-S-C-H, Marriott Hotel, Resorts, Dayton Marriott Hotel, 1414, South Patterson Boulevard, Dayton, Ohio, 45409. Ms. Peggy J. Haw, H-A-U-G-H, -H. Omni Venture, 1648, TCF Tower, 121, Minneapolis, Minnesota, 55402. Ms. Donna A. Berg, B-E-R-G, Los Alamos National Laboratory, Los Alamos, New Mexico, 87545. Miss Marilyn B. Mayer, M-A-Y-R, Department of Audit, Milwaukee County, 907 North 10th Street, 
Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 532-30. Jenny Bushman, B-U-S-H-M-A-N-C-P-S. Ingalls Memorial Hospital, 1 Ingalls Drive, Harvey, Illinois, 60426. Sil D. Haynes, H-A-N-E-S, 730 South Mentor Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91106. Martha L. Slater, S-L-A-G-H-T-E-R, 359 Oak Grove, Parchment, Michigan, 49504. Ernestine White, W-H-I-T-E, Best Products Company, Incorporated, P.O. Box 26303, Richmond, Virginia, 23260. All right, moving into our next drill. This focuses on final consonants, final RK, RKZ, RJ, RJD. All right, here we go. Hark to the song of the lark. Evil lurks behind every door. They will charge it to you. The court charged the jury. They thought it was a lark. Larks have a beautiful song. She went on a money spending splurge. She charged all her purchases. It was a stark picture. We encourage initiative. Have the pictures enlarged. The stork was on his way. Sharks have such ugly teeth. He was a victim of the purge. She was urged to comply. We have lots of work. That dog barks all the time. His quirks were revealing. It was a quirk in his nature. Marge was encouraged to proceed. All right, my next drill is called the The It Drill. Here we go. Ready? Pay it, top it, say it. The dog, the cat, the job. Keep it, time it, tape it. The cash, the sale, the dish. Trade it, store it, raise it. The stick, the house, the chain. Tip it, set it, cut it. The wit, the ham, the cap. Boil it, kick it, name it. The same, the rock, the dime. Leave it, paint it, state it. The truck, the chair, the laugh. Pat it, hit it, wet it. The cup, the rat, the pal. Turn it, sell it, pass it. The home, the hair, the flag. Plant it, grade it, place it. The river, the share, the place. Lug it, the bag, tap it. The hut, eat it, the pit. Grow it, the case, pace it. The pear, put it, the suit. Spell it, the trial, leave it. The shale, trace it, the smoke. The cab, row it, the egg. Peg it, the lot, rub it. Tag it, the hay, let it. The type, hear it, the race. The rag, ask it, the keg. Meet it, the safe, call it. Play it, the last, plan it. The lake, open it, the wind. The force, dress it, the pride. Drill it, the block, drive it. Track it, the trail, prove it. The right, shake it, the plane. <clears throat> okay, I have um, an automobile description drill. Here we go, ready? 2010 revamped ZX7 Ninja GSHR 750X. 2005 Kawasaki ZG 1200 Voyager 7. The DX CD 450 and the CG 125. The more affordable VRF 750F. Buy a ZX7 for $8,699. 11.22 seconds, 
at 122.3 miles per hour. Get a MT90HB16TL for only $191.23. Quarter mile, 12.06 seconds, 119.2 miles per hour, 268.3 cubic centimeters, 75.3 miles per hour terminal speed, vented summer gloves, $17.88. FZR 400 best open class tour bike, 321 weighted pendants cost $1,894.41. Exhibit J54 is a K100 LT 2016 motorcycle. 813 pound wet, 736 pound tank empty. Deposits totaled $14,589.73 for the Ninja motorcycle. Buy a Sportster 883 for just $5,423. One year subscription to the Motorcycle Magazine 12 issues at $14.66. All right. <clears throat> Had a little bit of everything in there. Great drill. <clears throat> All right. I have some sentences that focus on the following briefs, which I'm sure you already know these, they're the basic ones. Testify, vehicle, witness, country, evident, evidence, identify, identification, at this time, at any time, at that time, at the time, conversation, crosswalk, etc. pedestrian, passenger, in addition, which is NAD, just in case you don't know it, testimony in order, N-O-R-D, sidewalk, in other words, photograph at the present time, for instance, for example, in accordance. All right, so here are your sentences. Did you overhear the conversation? He spoke in a conversational tune. You may begin work at any time. For instance, what is his name? At the time, had you taken any steps? Were you working at the mill at that time? Are you living in the valley at this time? Their conversations were interesting. Bring pencils, for example. She was a good conversationalist. The fireman had not arrived at that time. The defendant is here at the present time. It was evident to all. Act in accordance with the law. In other words, he was feeling fine. I need another vehicle to drive. Pedestrians may cross in the crosswalk. I never pick up passengers. The airline built a new passenger terminal in order to improve service. The expert witness testified in both cases. Ray will be testifying soon. Can you identify him? He has no identifying marks. He bought wine, beer, etc. Robert was photographed at the scene. Our country is witnessing many changes. <clears throat> Were both countries represented? I witnessed the accident. The testimony was in evidence. Two witnesses were called. In addition, I bought a cake. She evidenced her approval. I had to testify. A photograph is a form of identification. He wrote the testimonial. The pedestrian was on the sidewalk. There were two vehicles involved. Sarah has a photographic memory. He, or excuse me, his method identifies him. I have two photographs of my father. His guilt is quite evident. 
Evidently, she did not hear the conversation at that time or at any time. I didn't think at the time that the testimony was correct. For instance, I want to know when you saw the crosswalk. At this time, identification is difficult. For instance, at that time, did you step off the sidewalk? Fill out the form in accordance with the rules in order to meet the deadline. At this time, I will call my first witness. <clears throat> All right. My last drill is going to be Tangle Tamers. All right. Here we go, ready? Clerical error, fair doubt, principles of law, bench warrant, true bill, separate accidents, given situation, evidence received, abiding conviction, respective parties, special significance, proximate negligence, your deliberations, draw inferences, objection sustained, materially impaired, document creating, copy attached, calculated rebuttal, officials elected, infrequent occurrence. All right. Now, I've got some Latin and French words. I'm going to give you the words and then I'll read you the paragraph. And this is part of our literary. Okay. All right. So you're going to hear inter vivos, quid pro quo, voir dire, or voir dire. You hear it both ways. <clears throat> Curriculum Vitae. All right, so I'm going to read this. I will read this at 120. Okay, here we go. A transaction between living persons is referred to as inter vivos. An inter vivos trust is a legal document creating rights among individuals prior to the death of any one of them. An inter vivos trust differs from a testamentary trust. Quid pro quo means what for what or something for something. An early form of the concept of a consideration in a contract is referred to as quid pro quo. The French term bordier means to speak the truth. A voir dire examination of a juror is conducted to determine a person's qualifications to serve on a jury. Curriculum vitae literally means the course of one's life. Frequently shortened to CV, a curriculum vitae is a written account of one's personal history in a resume format. All right, <clears throat> moving on to some congressional record. Let me give you a word list. You're going to hear counterparts, Paul Lang Taylor, posture, exclusive, conjunction, economic, senator, community, discrimination, justification, uh, Iowa, Mr. Gable, Mr. President, uh, let's see, Ridiculous, Daughter, Wholeheartedly. All right, so I'm going to start this at 120 and work my way to 140. Here we go. Yep, here we go. Ready? Mr. Gable, Mr. President. I thank the Senator from Iowa. I wholeheartedly agree on his last point. One of the greatest losses to the United States is that women have not been active enough 
in our economy. Business Week magazine recently conducted a study. Out of a total of 5,000 top paid individuals in big business in this country were women. Of those 22 women, 15 were in positions of responsibility because they were the wife or daughter of the chairman of the board. Doesn't it appear that women have never been given a chance? Until just recently, some of the best Eastern schools were classified as men-only colleges. This is ridiculous. Were they implying that women are less intelligent than their male counterparts? We should only, or not only, encourage women to seek an equal chance. We should enable them to get an equal chance. Women are beginning to get into the top law schools and the top medical schools, but it is a slow process. We as members of Congress should certainly do our best to discourage in exclusive memberships in clubs for men only. If women are excluded, this is a form of social and economic discrimination. The problem we are faced with is evaluating the position of Paul Lang Taylor, who has adapted a posture of defense for the right to all male social clubs, which exclude women. I wonder if Mr. Taylor understands the discrimination that is involved in this issue. A social club is organized to conduct business, social, and community activities. If women are excluded, Mr. Taylor is inferring that they have no business conducting these activities in conjunction with their male counterparts. I do not agree with Mr. Taylor's point of view, and I would like him to present to this committee in writing a justification of his position. <clears throat> All right, now I'm going to finish off <clears throat> what we started yesterday from the Sheriff's Department report. This is from a felony assault case, and um, I'm going to finish off the actual report and then go into the counts. We didn't finish all the counts that he was facing, that he was charged with. All right, so this is on suspect interview Miranda. Ready? I returned to my patrol unit and advised the suspect who was identified as Matthew Hines that I was going to advise him of his rights. I then read him his Miranda rights per my department issued Miranda warning card. To question number one, he said yes. And to question number two, it sounded as though he said no. And I attempted to confirm that with him. At that point, he said that he did say no but he would talk to me if I wished. The following is a summary of the interview that took place while Hines was seated in the back seat of my patrol unit. Hines' first statement was that his mother was exaggerated and he did not threaten her with a knife or a sword. He did admit he had a sword in his hand, but that he was only arguing with her as to what the sword was actually worth. He indicated that his mother thought the sword was worth thousands, and he thought it was only worth about $100. I asked him if he specifically had threatened her with a kitchen knife, and I showed him the kitchen knife. He said no, he hadn't. I asked him if he had kept his mother from making a phone call or told her not to make a phone call. And he said he hadn't done anything like that. 
I asked him if it was possible that he said something like that. And he said he did not recall. I asked him if his level of intoxication may have caused him problems remembering things that he may or may not have done. And he said that was a possibility. He confirmed that he had only consumed a pint of alcohol, although he appeared to be more intoxicated than if he would have only consumed a pint. I asked Hines what he was on parole for, and he indicated that he was on parole for false imprisonment. I asked him who the victim in the false imprisonment was, and he indicated the victim was his mother. I asked him who the victim was when he was charged in 2008 or 2009 with elder abuse, and he indicated that was also his mother, the victim. This concluded my interview with Hines. Arrest transport. Hines was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon and elder abuse. He was transported to the Boulder County Jail where he was booked on the above stated charges. Evidence. I booked the sword, the knife, and a CD containing the interviews done while at the scene into evidence. See attached DR3 for further information. Photographs. I photographed a sword inside the residence, which was a sword that the suspect had apparently attempted to get off the wall. I took the sword that he threatened the victim with and photographed that along with the kitchen knife while at the Boulder Station. I also photographed the victim and her injuries and placed those photographs into the digital imaging management system at the Boulder Station. Disposition. Case cleared by arrest. Forward to the district attorney's office for review and filing. <clears throat> All right, moving right into the counts. We're gonna pick up where we left off yesterday. Okay. Count three, on or about March 25, 2015, in the above named judicial district, the crime of assault with deadly weapon in violation of penal code section 245A1, a felony was committed by Matthew Hines, who did willfully and unlawfully commit an assault upon Noel Hines with a deadly weapon to wit a sword. Notice, the above offense is a serious felony within the meaning of Penal Code Section 1192.7c. Notice, conviction of this offense will require you to provide specimens and samples pursuant to Penal Code Section 296. Willful refusal to provide these specimens and samples is a crime. It is further alleged that pursuant to Penal Code Section 1170H3, Defendant Matthew Hines is eligible for imprisonment in the state prison due to the current charge is a serious or violent felony. The crime is not punishable pursuant to Penal Code Section 1170H3. On or about March 25, 2015, in the above named judicial district, the crime of criminal threats in violation of Penal Code Section 442, a felony, was committed by Matthew Hines, who did willfully and lawfully threaten to commit a crime which would result in death and great bodily injury to Noel Hines, with the specific intent that the statement be taken as a threat. It is further alleged that the threatened crime on its face and under the circumstances in which it was made was so unequivocal, unconditional, immediate, and specific as to convey to Noel Hines a gravity of purpose and an immediate prospect of execution. 
it is further alleged that the said Noelle Hines was reasonably in sustained fear of her safety and the safety of his or her immediate family. Notice, the above offense is a serious felony within the meaning of Penal Code Section 1192.7c. It is further alleged that pursuant to Penal Code Section 1170, H3, defendant Matthew Hines is eligible for imprisonment in the state prison due to the current charge is a serious or violent felony. The crime is not punishable pursuant to Penal Code Section 1170H3. Count 5, on or about March 25, 2015, in the above named Judicial District, the crime of false imprisonment, elder, dependent, adult, in violation of Penal Code Section 368F, a felony was committed by Matthew Hines, who did commit false imprisonment of Noel Hines, an elder and dependent adult, by use of violence, menace, fraud, and deceit. It is further alleged that pursuant to Penal Code Section 1170H3, defendant Matthew Hines is eligible for imprisonment in the state prison due to the current charge is a serious or violent felony. <clears throat> And that was the case from the DA's office. <clears throat> All right. How are we doing on time? All right, so we're going to go right into some Q&A. All right, and um, I'm going to first start off with just my one page. Um, Q&A, defense will be questioning, defense one. I'm going to read this once at 120, again at 140, and again at 160, because it's only one page. So let me give you a, <clears throat> a word list. We've got detonate, explosion, induction, flashlight, blasting, electric, transmission, conventional. All right. So this is going to be defense. First time will be at 120. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. What can detonate electric blasting caps, sir? Any conventional blasting machine, which is generally used for the purpose, a single electric blasting cap can be fired by using an ordinary one and a half volt flashlight cell. In other words, an electric charge will fire them. An electric charge will fire them. Would a shot from a pistol or a rifle detonate electric blasting caps? This is something that's hard to say positively. Could it? The odds are that it would if a direct hit was caused. A direct hit on the vital part of the cap could cause an explosion. Would fire detonate electric blasting caps? Oh yes. Would dropping a case of electric blasting caps detonate them? It is doubtful. Could it? I don't think so. Could transmissions from a two-way radio detonate electric blasting caps? There has been quite a bit on that, but I only know of one instance where this happened. It was under unusual conditions where an explosion was caused by induction of electricity of that sort. If there were electric blasting caps on the floor, and someone were to drop a hard metal object onto them, would that detonate them? Yes, if the floor was concrete. All right, so we'll do it again at 140. Here we go, ready? <clears throat> what can detonate electric blasting caps, sir? Any conventional blasting machine, which is generally used for the purpose a single electric blasting cap can be fired by using an ordinary one and a half volt 
or volt flashlight cell. In other words, an electric charge will fire them. An electric charge will fire them. Would a shot from a pistol or a rifle detonate electric blasting caps? This is something that's hard to say positively. Could it? The odds are that it would if a direct hit was caused. A direct hit on the vital part of the cap could cause an explosion. Would fire detonate electric blasting caps? Oh yes. Would dropping a case of electric blasting caps detonate them? It is doubtful. Could it? I don't think so. Could transmissions from a two-way radio detonate electric blasting caps? There has been quite a bit on that, but I only know of one instance where this happened. It was under unusual conditions where an explosion was caused by induction of electricity of that sort. If there were electric blasting caps on the floor and someone were to drop a hard metal object onto them, would that detonate them? Yes, if the floor was concrete. All right, so let's do that again at 160. What can detonate electric blasting caps, sir? Any conventional blasting machine, which is generally used for the purpose, a single electric blasting cap can be fired by using an ordinary one and a half volt flashlight cell. In other words, an electric charge will fire them. An electric charge will fire them. Would a shot from a pistol or a rifle detonate electric blasting caps? This is something that's hard to say positively. Could it? The odds are that it would if a direct hit was caused. A direct hit on the vital part of the cap could cause an explosion. Would fire detonate electric blasting caps? Oh yes. Would dropping a case of electric blasting caps detonate them? It is doubtful. Could it? I don't think so. Could transmissions from a two-way radio detonate electric blasting caps? There has been quite a bit on that, but I only know of one instance where this happened. <clears throat> it was under unusual conditions where an explosion was caused by induction of electricity of that sort. If there were electric blasting caps on the floor and someone were to drop a hard metal object onto them, would that detonate them? Yes, if the floor was concrete. All right. <clears throat> Now, this is going to be a deposition. So as you can see, I've left this up here. Um, this is our defense two instead of the court. So if he comes in, you can either, well, I advise that you sign him in as I, RBGS, herbs, okay? Because defense is if felt. So I, RBGS is the way we sign in defense two. Okay, I did have a student in the upper speeds tell me that she likes to sign in D2 as just the court, um, which is STPH, FPLT in the bottom bait, just because D2 will take place at the court. So at the state test, you're either gonna have a second defense attorney or the court, one or the other. So she just likes to use defense two as the court, so you have your option there, okay? All right, so this is gonna start off with defense one, but defense two and the plaintiff both come in. Okay, I'm gonna start at, um, let's see how we do it on time, good. I'm gonna start at 120 and then I'll work my way to 160, okay? Okay, here we go. Did you take any particular education or studies to qualify as a title searcher? No. Did you, were you required to take any particular studies to qualify as a title officer? No. Please describe your educational background. I've got a BS in law enforcement, high school diploma, and a junior college diploma. Where did you receive your BS? Berkeley. Where did you receive or achieve your AA? Merced Junior College. Do you have a particular major? Law enforcement. You went to high school where? Washington High School. 
can you list your work experience starting with your what led you to decide your first major job perhaps before or after leaving school give me the years this was my first major job after leaving college why didn't you go into law enforcement it took too long what was it that caused you to decide to go into title searching or title insurance work well economics is any member of your family connected with first american title or title insurance position no have you been convicted of a felony no are you familiar with the piece of property in approximately Irvine Can Canyon? I object to that question on the grounds that it's vague. I don't know what you mean by familiar with. Maybe you could ask if he ever did anything with respect to the property. I think he's trying to establish some ground rules so we can make sure we're talking about the same property in the deposition. That is exactly right. I'd like to ask you a series of questions regarding some property in Irvine Canyon that was at one time owned by Mrs. Landers, may still be owned by Mrs. Landers. Have you in your position at First American come into contact with property that matches that description. Why don't we agree that for the purpose, purposes of this deposition, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Okay, anyway, the person ordering the report said, I want two preliminary title reports. Copies, yes, two copies, all right. Is this information placed at the time generally placed at the time the order is taken yes it's a request form from the person ordering the report what is the significance of plats following the term to prelims sometimes we just send out reports without a map to support the legal description so what does that have to do with plats a plat in title insurance jargon is just an identification of a map. Okay, the next box below says hold for. What is intended to be placed in that box? Any information that would be requested to hold for further instructions or hold for any other supported documents that would be concluding or would be would be held to the file. With this box, there is a January 26, 2011 reference. Now, first of all, do you know what that says? Is it your handwriting? No, the reference there is our typing pool when they sent out the reports. Okay, now on the same line as January 26, is that a series of initials? What is that? It could be yes. Do you know or are you guessing? No, I don't know. Do you have any idea what the significance of those letters are? No. Okay, and then it says P-O-L. Do you know what that means? No. And then it says M-R-R-O-H-O-L-D. I don't know. Does that appear to be someone's name? Do you recognize that as someone's name? No. Then the word binder, and then does it say R. Brandt? Possibly. Let me ask you again. Do you know what that entire entry means or signifies? No. You had said that it possibly had something to do with this pool. Yes. That's their own system of when reports would be delivered and whatever the rest represents, I'm not sure. Is it your belief that the entry somehow communicates that something was delivered on or about 
January 26, 2011? Yes. What is that? That would have been delivered. Is that the binder? A report was delivered, yes. The report, it says binder. That's the reason I suggested binder. I don't know if that was delivered. It is just, I believe he's saying that he knows something was delivered. That was the day something was delivered, but he does not know what these particular notations represent. Is that correct? Yes. Can you tell from looking at that who did the delivery? No. By delivery, you mean mailed or can you? Mailed or sent out through a courier service. All right. Those would be the normal means of delivering the report? Yes. Or a binder? Yes. Yes? Yes. Now, there is a December 18, 2010 entry. Is that in your handwriting? No. Do you recognize the handwriting? No. Can you tell me what it says? No. Do you know when someone with the initials LR, who may have been at First American about that time? Maybe. Maybe. We have 250 employees. The next line says P-R-E to Brandt. Is that correct? Yes. Would you understand that to mean that two preliminary reports were somehow given to Brandt? Yes. What does it say below that? T-O for maps. All T-O, T-O for maps. What does that mean to you? There was no map submitted with the report, and they're asking me to get them for them. What about that? How do you feel that that's what it says? Excuse me? What about that entry causes you to feel that they are asking you to do anything? Well, T.O. Re represents title officer. Okay, all right. Now, do you recall seeing this particular entry, having seen this in December of 2011? I see them daily. So you don't have any particular recall about this one, is that right? Right. Let me ask you, do you have any recollection, any recollection from December of 2010 of dealing with the December 9, 2010 packet? Nine? Yes. Okay. The question is, do you remember dealing? Do you remember this? Yes. What do you remember doing in connection with this particular title search or title preliminary report? Nothing other than it being presented to me today. So as you sit here today, you don't have any memory of dealing with this packet, the December 9 packet in December of 2010. Other than seeing it, this is the first time I've seen it since that point in time, yes. Okay, now, having seen it, does it refresh your memory that you actually saw it in December of 2017? I'm sorry, 2010. Yes. Do you recall functioning as a title officer in connection with this packet in 2010? Yes. Do you recall what, if anything, you did in that capacity in December of 2010? Compiling a search as requested by Mr. Brandt, yes. You recall compiling a search? Oh, a searcher compiled it and reviewed it for typing or submission to Mr. Brandt. That means you recall reviewing it, is that correct? Yes. Let me make you understand, sitting here today, you remember in December what you did in that December in reviewing it. The sequence of events is the actual physical reviewing. That means, do you actually remember going through it? No. Sometimes people say or feel they remember something because they know they did it. Okay, all right. So we're going to try to delineate, if possible, between what you actually remember and what you believe you did based on what is in front of you. Do you understand? Yes, that's why I'm asking you, what do you actually remember, if anything, concerning this title search in December of 2010? Just the uniqueness of it as far as an appraisal. Okay, what do you mean by that? The uniqueness as far as an appraisal. 
just that Mr. Brandt was wanting a report to be issued with a possible policy to be issued, not knowing the ex excessive value of the land, and he's submitting to my company and independent appraisal of the company. So you recall feeling something was unique about that in December, is that correct? Yes, it's very seldom somebody doesn't know property values in Orange County. Is there anything else about Mr. Brandt or the appraisal that you consider unique? No. Do you recall reviewing the title information that the searcher provided to you in December of 2010? No. Do you recall any of the thinking process or decision-making process that you went through to finally approve the preliminary title report in December of 2010? No. Does the fact that you have the packet in front of you at all refresh your memory and assist you in recalling anything that you've previously said you can't recall? No. Let's continue in our deposition of Exhibit A. In the lower left, there is a term account, and then there is a series of letters or numbers. What do they mean? What is signified by what's written there? That represents the area searched by the searcher. Why don't we give you the good copy, and he can look at the original. By area, do you mean geographical area, or do you mean file or book or some such thing as that? First American's identification of the area has to be searched. Again, is it a geographical area that you are referring to? The property is how the property is identified within First American. Is it a legal description as in our plant, which contains all of the documentation concerning the property? That is information that we would use internally to identify the property being requested to search. All right, it says account I1 block 181. Is there some kind of a system of filing that you go to to find that? Yes, what would you look for? Our books are set up alphabetically and numerically, and we would go to book I1 and block 181 would represent the numerical block within I1 that the property is located in. Next line down, what does that say? ARB, what does that? ARB itself would represent the Northwest quarter or the Northeast quarter contained within the blocks or the alphabetical identification that we would have to search the property in. What do the letters ARB mean? That represents the arbitrary number that First American would give the property for our own identification. Then the letters LDS, what does that mean or signify? That's another alphabetical identification. That's our lands accounts. You said lands accounts. Is that what you got? Yes. Does the combination of letters ARB, LDS mean arbitrary lands accounts or arbitrary block accounts or ARB tract? So I take it you could find and A-R-B-T-R-K for tract or L-D-S for lands? Right, okay. Then the 384 is a number that First American assigns to this piece of land, an area that this piece of property would be contained in, meaning it can be found in area 384. Yes, but that wouldn't necessarily be specifically this piece of property. It would include this property and other lands. Okay, then am I correct that it's the remaining means? It's found in the Northeast quarter? Yes, or the Northwest quarter. I have NW quarter dash NW. I am sorry, NE dash NW quarter. Yes, does that mean either of those quarters is where it can be found or both? or both, and then SW quarter could be in all three quarters. Yes, partially or partially or wholly then. Then number four or five, what does that signify? That's another type of identification of the property itself too. This search had encompassed many areas. So we had about three or four different references that we had to make. 
I'm going to write in the word searcher next to Rex. Let's go back up to the second column. It says report and write. What does that mean? Write the report and the numbers one through six represent how many copies are being requested. The date, what does that signify? It represents the effective date of the report. And then the word best, what does that signify? The person purportedly with an interest in the property. What do the letters A to A, what does the letter A with a circle around it mean? That's just the searchers. It's an identification. You might go A to A or B to B or C to C. It will just identify what they want to be picked up at that point. It's a notation in the typing pool, pick up A to A. Yes, yes. Let's go off the record, back on the record. There is a document, if I understand, based upon what you said off the record, where there is some information that appears and on that document are found in two locations in a letter A with a circle around it. Is that correct? Yes. Is that page 22 where the A's are found? Yes. This is an instruction to the typing pool to show the property vested as is shown on page 22 between the two A's. Is that correct? Yes. All right, below that, the box shows a number of alternative forms of holding title. Is that correct? Forms of holding title, yes. What does the word fee with a circle around it signify? It would be an owner, whereas the next one would be an easement, person by, known as easement. The next item would be the person that owns the leasehold or is part of a leasehold estate within the property. PCLs shown there mean what? For instance, you might have a legal description that encompasses three or four areas. So you might say parcel one, parcel two, or parcel three. So we would identify what parcel that person has an interest in. We would have to add our own numerical numbers in there. Does the fact that the word, that the word fee has a circle around it constitute, in effect, an instruction to the pool to show that the vesting found between A and A is in fee simple? Yes. Now we go to the fun part. Can you please just take one item, one through 10, in the next lower box and tell us what is indicated by the codes shown there? Under item one, a T5 represents a taxation code. Item number two, Excuse me, there is then 11, and it says page one. What does that mean? Okay, there again, the T and the numerical numbers, five and 11, represents a taxation code. That information is found on page one of the taxation code of the preliminary title report. All right, item two says G1. Before we get too confused, we have referred to two things as a preliminary title report. I believe that Mr. Powers, when he says of the preliminary report, is referring to this stack of materials for that date. We have also called that, which is mailed to the customer, as a preliminary title report. Just to be clear, what Mr. Powers means is that, which appears in page one of the material provided by him by the searcher. Is that correct? Yes, that is. All right, that concludes our mid-speed live class. Have a great day.